Uh, then next to put you in the hot seat is Daniel F. Hello, Dave. I was recently going to, hello, Daniel F. I was recently going through uh, some, a moment of share of this post from 2017 about the plans for following Cerebus after Craig Miller's unfortunate passing. Uh, only the back issue of liquidation through eBay, there were plans to create and sell a collection of the 12 issues in one volume from scans with the goal of all revenue going to Jennifer Miller's trust fund. Uh, did that simply get put on the back burner and never got revisited? Or were there other problems that prevented it from happening? Um, what's the, what's the next one? Was there any resistance from involved parties, such as the other half of Windmill Productions? Uh, P.S. Happy belated birthday. Thank you, Daniel S. Um, the situation was my contact was with um, Craig Miller's dad and uh, all I could really do was attempt to participate from that vantage point. From, uh, that's that's where, where I was on geographical map. This is as close as I can get to what we all knew was Craig's primary concern, which was uh, which was Jennifer, uh, is, and I think um, very definitely uh, Craig's dad put in a good five years of his life um, figuring out all of the stuff that Craig had, finding out how to sell it for the best price, finding out how to put it in uh, in a trust fund for Jennifer. Uh, Following service was kind of a a, uh, a complete sideshow side thing uh, relative to that. We all knew that that was the situation, uh, but I did I did convey that to uh, Craig's dad uh, that 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 was the intention. the The biggest problem was the um, the digital thought. Uh, uh, the digital files were locked inside uh, one of Craig's computers or a couple of Craig's computers, and nobody knew the password. And I don't think ever, anybody ever did find out the password. So, And I think that happens a lot uh, in this modern age. Uh, so consequently, it was... The big plus is following service was printed on... Uh, pretty clean, glossy paper, and um, pretty, pretty reasonably high resolution. So it's it's not as if um, if Sean Robinson had scans of all twelve issues, and you know um, we all we all pulled in to pay him to remaster uh, following service um, from the printed copies. It would be a pretty nice-looking book. Um, it, it, the problem was it, it was definitely a contentious uh, divorce that, uh, that Craig had, had gone through with his ex and definitely uh, looking at, uh, at custody of Jennifer. And um, his ex was... Uh, definitely one of those, uh, I am woman, hear me roar. This is my kid, and I don't care what you want to do. You're not going to have anything to do with my kid. You are getting yourself out of my and my kid's life, period. And uh, she was definitely uh, a real fireball on that in terms of um, they, you know, they had the, the investigation that, uh, you know, Craig Miller is uh, um, molesting his daughter and, uh, you know, she wants him charged and uh, absolutely no, no custody, no access. 
And it's like they investigated that over the course of a couple of years or whatever and went, okay, there's nothing here. It's, uh, you know, it's one of those situations where shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Um, you are getting out of me and my daughter's life and no ifs, ands, or buts. If this is what it takes, this is what it takes. Um, this is what we'll do. And this was, and the same thing where, uh, when there was a court order, you know, this is, this is shared custody. Um, we can no, negotiate some of the, uh, ins and outs of it, but it's definitely a shared custody thing. And, uh, okay, that got appealed to the next court up. That got appealed to the next court up from that. And they went, no, no, definitely. We've, um, we checked all the math. We looked at, uh, all of the agreed statement of facts, blah, blah, blah. And no, this is going to be a shared custody situation. Uh, at which point, uh, her mother took Jennifer and took her back to Ohio from Texas. And, there they stayed. And it was um, at, a, at a specific point, all of the money that, uh, that Craig was spending on lawyers and, um, you know, trying just to work his way through the family courts, which um, I've never gone through that. Uh, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy, uh, particularly with a fireball who is going you are getting out of my daughter's life and my life, and that's the end of it. And that's it. It's just no ifs, ands, or buts. So consequently, uh, Craig's dad was going to do what he needed to do and was spending, spending a lot of time and money on lawyers, um, knowing who the ex was, where she was, where Jennifer was, and saying, okay, I have to cross all the T's and dot all the I's to make sure that when uh, Jennifer is of age, that's when she gets this money that has been raised and her mother doesn't get any of it under any circumstances. So as you say, I, we're, we're, somewhere, we're either there or we're somewhere close to that um, at this point. And... I, we don't know. Uh, you know, a lot hinges on, um, you hope that Jennifer hasn't completely forgotten her father. Uh, you hope that Jennifer hasn't been completely poisoned against her father. And um, I think, at least in terms of the trust fund existing, and Craig's dad, I don't even know if uh, Craig's dad is still alive. Um, he was he was pretty advanced in years and was uh, burning the candle at both ends trying to do a proper job of this. I she can't I, she couldn't completely have forgotten uh, Craig, but uh, in terms of does she remember following Cerebus? Does she remember Cerebus? Does she remember Dave Sim? Does she remember Windmill Productions? Does she remember um, uh, Wrapped in Plastic? Uh, and if she does remember, does she have any level of interest in it? It's uh, whoever, whoever she has grown into in her context in wherever she is in Ohio, uh, the odds that she would be the apple that doesn't fall far from the tree is really, really unlikely. And even trying to remain as optimistic as possible. So all we can say is, I, I think it's pretty much in the same category as uh, comic art news and reviews. Um, John Valjay uh, didn't want Comic Art News and Reviews republished. Uh, it was his. So, you know, I have to respect that. Gave all the uh, scans of Comic Art News and Reviews to the family. Um, if I ever hear another word about this, 
I will be the most surprised guy in the room because, you know, no offense, families are families, uh, which is why uh, Cerebus is not being left to my family. Uh, Cerebus is being left to Eddie Connor, who is a huge Dave Sim Cerebus fan, and consequently, um, he will do right by Dave Sim and Cerebus. Uh, most people don't think that way. I understand that most people don't think that way. It's like, well, what about the family? It's like, if the families were good custodians, I would say, okay, you always have to factor the family in. Families are the worst custodians, not because um, there's anything wrong with families, just the apple usually falls reasonably far from the tree, particularly if you're talking about something like service, um, or if you're talking about uh, comic art news and reviews. It's, uh, this is a really esoteric thing that's very, very important to these people over here and of zero interest to the family. So it's, the situation exists that if, if this does become a one in a million shot and at some point, um, you know, uh, Jennifer is in her 20s or 30s or something and goes, um, what about, uh, you know, that uh, windmill production? I, I, I want to know about windmill production. And, okay, here's the situation with my windmill production. It's yours. Uh, whatever you want to do with it. Um, two, it, we're already over in, you know, uh, lottery odds, but uh, as long as we're over here in lottery odds, we might as well keep telling you about it. It's uh, at that point, um, either she goes, yeah, I'm, I'm actually interested in this. You know, I, uh, 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 I uh, the, the name of, uh, of Craig's partner slips my mind. John. John, yes. I want to say I want to say it's like stone. Anyway, you know you know who I'm talking about, right? So that if if, uh, uh, if John she manages to find John, and uh, he's, he can fill her in on windmill productions and say, you know, here's digital files and all this stuff. And she looks at it and goes, yeah, I'm actually interested in this. This, you know, it's. Uh, you know, I'm doing well in my career, and I could see putting in time on this as a hobby and to honor Dad's memory. And yeah, I'm I'm interested. Or she goes, uh, I'm really not interested in this, but I do want to honor Dad, uh, Dad's memory, and I know it was really important to him. So I'm going to go shopping to find the best person to develop this, and if I make some money off of it. That's fine, but you know, if I have to just kick in some money so that a um, complete following Cerebus book uh, can be published, yeah, I would like to do that. And consequently, it would be her call to decide uh, where and how that would be done. And it's like, you know, it's, it's Dave Sims hiding in plain sight. Everybody. Everybody tries, you know, just because I don't have email, it's like, wow, are you ever a difficult guy to track down? It's like, all the phone books have the same phone number uh, from 40 years ago. So for 40 years, if you just go, gee, I'll, I'll try this phone number and see what I get. Uh, not the primary, not the, the lead phone number in the ad, but the second phone number is the same phone number that I still got. Uh, it's like, uh, no, I, I, I'm not hard to find, uh, but you would have to be intentionally looking for me. It's, uh, I do get messages from people along those lines of, I hope this is okay, I found your phone number online, and uh, I'm just leaving a message. A uh, guy I went to high school with, Mark, Mark Norsery, really did that. And it's, uh, no, that's great. That's one of the reasons that I don't make uh, the phone number is secret, is uh, uh, if somebody has a 
good reason to call them Dave Sims. Well, uh, not like it's not like it's uh, um, you know something something that you couldn't possibly find if you devoted a, a month of your life to it. It's like you no know, Dave Sims Google search. Eventually, it'll take you to uh, a moment of service. They'll tell you they'll they'll tell you where to find me. Well, I I know that. Uh... Wrapped in pla- there was something that came up a couple months ago. Wrapped in plastic was available again. Like uh, John was, I don't know if he's doing physical issues or if he was doing a Kickstarter for a collection. Like that part, I forget. But I know that it, it got brought up because somebody went, "Well, does this mean that there could be a chance for following service?" And it's like, well, on the one hand, yeah. On the other hand, who knows? You know, it's. You know, because if, yeah. if remember John, you know, it was it's a windmill production, but it was more Craig's thing than John's thing. Right, and and uh, for the people listening who are probably wondering, wrapped in plastic, what the hell is wrapped in plastic? It's uh, Twin Peaks. Um, this was one of Craig's uh, other obsessions was David Lynch's Twin Peaks, and he did probably. 60 issues of Wrapped in Plastic, which covered all aspects of Twin Peaks and also all aspects of David Lynch. Did, did you did you get a sense that uh, uh, this was new material or this was Wrapped in Plastic being reprinted? Uh, if I remember right, it was being reprinted, but it sounded like that it was... Phase one is getting stuff back in print. Phase two is new stuff. Okay. I I, I literally will have to go back and look because it was it, it came in as as it brought brought up somewhere and I was going, okay, well that's interesting because you know back in 2020 when we were all staying home and and had nothing to do, I started scanning all my copies of Following Service so I had them. And, right. And and then and then being me, it was. Oh, not only should I should I scan these, I should put them through a AI uh, video program thing where it'll tran- translate it into a text file, and that way you can you know you can do you know you can reformat it to reprint it type thing if you needed to, and, and of course this was early AI that was really not good at the concept of you because. Know, I, I think the scans I didn't I didn't have the scanner set to the highest resolution, so it, it's it was I'm trying to remember it, it was all sorts of transcription errors where like Aardvark Vanaheim turned into the weirdest things, you know, and, and right. blocks. Right. Of, you know, you'd have to go back and fix all the text anyway, and I'm and at a certain point I went okay, let's stop doing that and just keep scanning it, and we'll come back to the once we get the scans, they're there now it. Once I get them all, and I did, I want to say two or three issues, maybe five issues, because there's there's the twelve issues of Following Service and the two issues of Service Companion, and I did right. maybe half of them, and then I hit the wall of issue nine and went, this this is gonna take some work, and then <laughs> I I told I, I let people on the Facebook group know that I was doing this, and Margaret went, well I have a spare copy of issue nine that I was going to scan, but I kind of hit the wall of, I don't want to rip this apart and do this. So she sent me her copy, and it was sitting on top of my computer desk of a, okay, when you have time, start pulling this apart and scanning it. And the, 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 then the world started up again. It's like, yeah, time? What's time? <laughs> right, right. But uh, Yeah, that's, that's one of those... Um Plan B might be two or three decades up ahead. Well, it's, it's, it's on my list of, you know, when I have a weekend where I'm not doing anything, I can, because that, I mean, that's how, how it started was, I have all this free time during the day because I'm staying home with the kids, and okay, right. you know, all you got to do is put the page on the scanner, scan it, save it, flip the page, scan it, save it. You know, and I, I was doing that. It was fine for the first couple issues, but then, like I said, I hit nine. It's like, this is square bound. It's not going to lay flat. It's it's going to be, you're going to have to, you know, get Sean involved cleaning up the files. And I'm going, oh, I don't want to do that. And, 
And then, right. and then Margaret sent me the copy. It's like, well, I can rip this apart, and you know, I can I can do a Jeff Seiler collected letters where I can just rip the pages out as I need them, and you know, when I'm done, put them in a baggie and then mail it to somebody who doesn't have the issue of, here's a copy you can read. Don't read it outside, and make sure the window's not open. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, if you get an exacto knife and just uh, just cut the pages out. That's probably the fastest you could go uh, in in terms of scanning. But yeah, you wouldn't want to try and uh, hold it down flat on uh, on a scanner. What? It's uh, it, 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 it's. Um, I, I think maybe there's a, there's a little cause for optimism then because I I I I couldn't picture John going ahead. And doing something with um, with wrapped in plastic uh, without notifying um, Jennifer's mother that you know this is because that is, if you're talking about um, Craig's estate, uh, Craig's estate is basically held in trust for Jennifer, and his part of wrapped in plastic would be. Uh, Part of part of that state, but uh, one of those uh, you, you don't you, you don't know all of the, all of the the drama that might be taking place uh, over on that side of things, um, and the fact that uh, you know no uh, it, you you would have to say that it's, it's probably unlikely that. Uh, uh, Following therapists would come up in conversation because it's it's not it's not as big a deal as uh, Twin Peaks, even though um, you know Twin Twin Peaks is not exactly at its peak of popularity. That they, they've had like uh, revivals and, and stuff like that, right? And sequels and prequels and the, the, whatever else. Yeah, they came back and did the third season twenty five years later. And and it and it, it kind of blew up again, and it was oh you know if you're a Twin Peaks fan, this is a great time type thing, and if everybody went so is there going to be a season four? And David Lynch is kind of like probably not, and and I'm I'm going well come on, I mean you know if they're going to throw money at you, you know, but it sounds like it's a no 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 we you know, we went back and we we you know the classic Twin Peaks we're going to resolve everything. It's it's yeah yeah no you're not. You're gonna resolve. You're gonna resolve three things and create six more new questions, and the fandom's gonna to continue to go. Okay, what about what about what about you know and you know you're never gonna get everything tied up into a little bow because that's it was designed to never be tied up into a little bow. Right. Right. And, but it is. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, it's it's on its own roller coaster in terms of. Like you say, it, it blew up again, and um, there is there is a core audience, uh, not only for Twin Peaks but for David Lynch's material. You know, a real cult of cult of uh, personality. That um, that's I, mean, I I would imagine that that will just keep happening, and consequently, every time that that does happen, um, becomes more interesting from our perspective depending on how old Jennifer is at the time. Because uh, I'm trying to think, she was like, what, seven? Eight? Um, let, me, let me check <laughs> Craig's black over here in, uh, in the rectangle. Uh, yeah, he died uh, 2012. So, um, Jennifer, I think, was was seven at the time. So, yeah, she's uh, 19, 20, going to be 19 or 20. That would mean uh, whenever the next uh, uh, Twin Peaks expanding universe hits, uh, she will definitely be... Um, at, at not only at the age of majority, but at the age where you do go, 
well, okay, what do I want to do about this? Uh, what, what is my stake in this? And uh, what's, uh, what do I think is the right thing to do about it? Because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hearing from John. Uh, John Thorne? No. Yes? Uh, that's possible. Anyway. It's one of those... If I had if I had a copy of Following Service right in front of me, I'd go, "Oh yeah, here's the answer." But it's I I packed that stuff up. <laughs> okay, you said that, and uh, I went. I've got a copy of Following Service right over here. Uh, where are we? I'm not going to be able to see it because my eyesight isn't good enough. So I would have to go and get. Uh, the magnifying glass. Well, and 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 knowing our luck, you grabbed issue ten, which is all backwards and weird and and not printed correctly because it it's the dream issue. No, it's number twelve. Okay, <laughs> but that would have been funny. You, you got that right. So, um, okay, uh, I think I probably am going to go and get the magnifying glass, and you'll just edit this part up. Okay. I was right, John Thorne. I win the Saturnite luggage. Are you still there? That's... You got up to get the magnifying glass. I got up to get my... I have a spare copy of number four. And I'm like, oh, wait, I'll quick grab that. Yeah, it's uh, it's John Thorne, which is uh, really strange because uh, I'm just... Uh, writing <coughs> Frank Thorpe into uh, into a comic book today, and going, "Oh, this is a little weird. <laughs> this is another one of those uh, service and health quest things." So let's let's see if we can manage to get out of this particular vortex. <laughs> uh,